Bonjour, hello everyone, and welcome to this new edition of Business Africa. I am Dea Yoka. Here are the headlines. Agricultural transformation proceeds in Africa and attracts more and more investors. Startups operating on the continent in the agri-tech sector raised $482 million in 2021, which represents a 250% growth compared to the previous year. Nigeria is no longer Africa's biggest oil producer. The production has been steadily declining for months. Authorities point out increased theft of crude oil and sabotage at production sites. The ACP Culture Programme launched its third call for proposals to support cultural and creative industries in Central Africa. The objective is to increase the economic revenues of the creative sector, foster the creation of sustainable jobs and highlight artists and their work. The agri-tech startup ecosystem is thriving in Africa. It has been the case for the past two years. Despite existing challenges, particularly in terms of accessibility, the agri-tech startup scene continues to attract investors. Since 2017, the industry has garnered over $1 billion in investments. Tea farming in Rwanda. Hundreds of agri-food tech products have emerged in Africa, with the last two years seeing a dramatic increase in foreign funding for agricultural technologies. A report published by the venture capital fund AgFunder found that fundraising by agri-food tech startups jumped by 250% in 2021. Over the years, the annual number of roundtables launched by African agri-food tech startups has grown steadily from 51 in 2017 to 150 in 2021. Climate change has made the transformation of Africa's agri-food sector essential in order to survive. But the increased move to agri-food tech does come with its own challenges. Some of the issues include accessibility and affordability of the material required, and the sometimes difficult conditions under which African farmers operate slows down the deployment of new technologies. A report by global management consultancy firm McKinsey highlights the fact that over 60% of the population in sub-Saharan Africa are small-scale farmers. Millions of them do not have a smartphone or even access to the internet. The challenge, therefore, is to create an enabling environment for agro-technology deployment, while at the same time making new technologies affordable and available to small and medium-scale farmers. To dive deeper into the topic, we're joined by Francis Dossou-Sognon, CEO at Agrosphere. Good morning, sir. How are digital breakthroughs gaining momentum in the agribusiness sector in Africa? Hello. First of all, I think that this trend will continue in the years to come, simply because African agriculture, we're told, is generally between 30 and 35 percent of the GDP of African countries. But in reality, these are sectors that are underperforming. There's a real untapped potential for several reasons. It may be the techniques that producers use, which today means that African producers have 20 to 50 percent of the real productivity in other countries on the same areas. It can also be post-harvest losses because our products often rot at the stage of harvesting. It can also be a question of information between supply and demand. And finally, it can be especially questions of putting the product to standards to be able to export it. And today, these companies, these startups that are proliferating and successful, are proliferating because they provide concrete solutions to these problems. The solutions you've just outlined require importing foreign technologies. Are these technologies suitable to local conditions? When we talk about technology, we can divide it into two main groups. We're going to talk about everything that is hardware and everything that is software. All that is soft, you are the software. So everything that is hardware, the equipment. We're talking about computers or sensors, objects, tablets, and tools. We don't really know how to manufacture all that in Africa yet, and at best, we shall import the components and build them locally. On the software side, it's completely different. Today, all the startups operating in Africa, or at least the African startups, manufacture and develop their software, design it and produce it locally. 
The agro-technology sector faces many challenges, but that does not discourage investors. How do we explain such a passion? The whole chain, all the value chains that we take from small producers to processors to industries through the intermediaries of transformation and transport, all these people have real opportunities to develop because agriculture in Africa still has a real margin for progress. The players, the startups that bring value-added services to all these players will necessarily have the same growth as global agriculture in Africa. So there's a real potential, which is estimated at billions of dollars by the World Bank by 2030. So there are real opportunities in the sector, and it is therefore logical that the players who provide services, concrete services that are relevant and respond to real problems, follow this growth trend and therefore attract investors. Climate change is forcing us to prepare for transformations in many sectors, including the agri-food sector. How does this sector adapt to eco-friendly frameworks? Startups today have this component for the most part. Today, this is what is also interesting in the approach of agritechs such as AgroSphere. We're obliged to think about the agriculture of tomorrow in what we do. It is simply to help the farmer today, but by accompanying them towards the agriculture of tomorrow because it is obliged to be agroecological and is obliged to resort to agroforestry, to the regeneration of soils and all that. And to do this, we have to solve key challenges. One of the first problems we have in agriculture in Africa is the practices. Today, in most regions of sub-Saharan Africa, we continue to do agriculture the same way our parents or grandparents did. This means that there are a lot of techniques and technologies that have been integrated into agriculture throughout the world, but not in Africa. And popularizing good practices, for example, the right thing at the right time, even if it's only that, can already improve productivity without necessarily using chemicals or techniques that are harmful to the soil in which we produce. Thank you for your insight, sir. Thank you for having me. Nigeria lost Africa's top oil producer spot to Angola, according to the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission. The country's production in August fell to 972,000 barrels per day, its lowest level in over 30 years. Nigeria has lost its position as Africa's top oil producer. It's now placed second to Angola and may soon drop to third place after Libya. The Nigerian Petroleum Regulatory Commission says the country's oil production in August fell to 972,000 barrels per day, its lowest level since 1990, and down from its July total of about 1.1 million barrels per day. The decline poses a further threat to the strained finances of Africa's most populous nation and reduces global oil supply at a time when energy costs are soaring as a result of Russia's war in Ukraine. According to OPEC figures, Nigeria's highest crude oil and condensate production this year, recorded in January, was 1.68 million barrels per day, although the country has the capacity to export nearly 2 million. Authorities blame this drop on increased crude oil theft and sabotage at production sites. About 20% of Nigeria's capacity is reportedly being diverted. That amounts to about 400 to 500,000 barrels a day. This month, authorities intercepted nearly 36 million liters of stolen oil and 22 million liters of diesel. Nigeria's declining production is also coupled with massive spending to maintain high subsidies on petrol, which is dragging down growth. The ACP Culture Programme creating in Central Africa aims to support the cultural and creative industries of the sub-region through its third call for project endowed with a budget of 1.2 million euros. Africa has an impressive pool of creators capable of feeding the main economic sectors of culture. In 2020, the creative and cultural industries represented nearly 3% of Africa's GDP. And the time has come for the actors of this flourishing sector to transform this trend into a source of growth and development. However, the structures allowing creators to live from the art are greatly lacking on the continent. 
to democratize art as an economic engine, support platforms exist. With 1.2 million euros, the ACP EU cultural program, created in Central Africa, has launched a third and final call for proposals in support of cultural and creative industries in the sub region. Co funded by the Organization of Africa, Caribbean and Pacific States, and the European Union, the initiative aims to stimulate the potential of the cultural sector and its contribution to socio economic development in Africa, Caribbean, and Pacific countries. In the same vein, in Côte d'Ivoire, the investment company Behrman and Orange Bank Africa announced a partnership dedicated to the financing of Ivorian cultural operators. Through this collaboration, designers and actors at the heart of the fashion industry will be able to benefit from loans ranging from $2,000 to $30,000. That brings us to the end of this edition of Business Africa, but the news continues on all our platforms and on africanews.com.